<laughs> Our next sessions will be on the miscellaneous sessions. Very interesting. There is a four four topics or varieties or different varieties assorted session actually it is a assorted sessions the last sessions but not the least the this session is a courtesy by square pharmaceuticals you are the chair persons professor m bashar professor mohammad jahid hussain professor noresh chandra mondol professor liaquat hussain tapon dr ganaputi aditya dr shahriyar kobir Dr. Mohammad Arifur Rahman, chairpersons. Our first speaker is Dr. Abdullah Shahriyar, who is the head of the Department of Pediatric Cardiology and ICVD, adult PDA, how to deal with. Dr. Shahriyar? Are you with us? Dr. Shahriyar? Shahriyar, what is it? Yes, sir. sir yeah, please. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. Sir, yes. We cannot see you, but okay, sir. I just I'm going to you... share the screen first. First of all, you are on the video. Okay, sir. Shari, <laughs> any problem? No, sir, I'm just starting. <laughs> so, so it's visible, sir. Uh, My no. slide is visible, sir. No, no, no. You have to share your screen first. First of all, you have to share your screen, please. Open your presentation. First, first of all, open your presentation. Shari presentation. Yeah. Okay. Now it's visible, sir. Uh, you can no, proceed. No, no, no. Sir, it is all right. It's it is all right sir? now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your presentation is visible. Okay, we also so, hear sir, it. Can I start, sir, with the? Oh, sure, please. Okay, sir. So, with the with the due permissions of the chairperson, go to uh, the presentation uh, mode. Uh, presentation. Honor, honorable. Our point uh, is. Presentation mode. Okay, sir. <coughs> so it's a present. So it's a present. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, sir. okay. 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 Yeah. Fine. I I won't I won't uh, I, won't, I, won't, uh, I won't go for any uh, kind of uh, complications. So you can start with your due permissions, uh, uh, your uh, chairman, chairpersons of the sessions, and my honor uh, honorable uh, teachers and uh, mentors and colleagues. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm uh, without any. Uh, <laughs> So, sir, I'm uh, visible, sir. Oh, you are now uh, off. SVD. I'm the department head. You are now off now. now. Okay, sir. It takes time few seconds, sir. Please, sir. Wait few seconds. 
शरे भाई यू स्टार्ट जस्ट टेक टाइम ओके ना शारी वी कैन नॉट सी योर प्रेजेंटेशन गो टू योर स्लाइड शो विजिबल होने सर इट विल टेक टाइम प्रफेसर एम एस सर सलाम सर कम सर yes bolo well, well, sir fine thank you very much you are taking lot of pain as like you comment on sir kichu sir is a very interactive session i must convey my thanks and gratitude to the authority of cardiac society bangladesh and every member of the cardiac society although it is a virtual session but very interactive very nice nicely organized and you have taken lot of pain chehra dekha jaye na chehra dekha jaye na oh okay kamrul sir ke full dekhao acha sir ke camera ta down kar na kamrul jage ta 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 na kamrul jage लेटेशन सो the from the patent at at your says so i will just give a brief history how we come to light so is a uh, first is a fetus in the italy and is given bestesia gercano he described that uh, uh, pda in uh, mid century then uh, the the practice has also been uh, described in an uh, 18th uh, 19th uh, 17th century then and all the evolutions of done in last 50 years so uh, okay so i am visible sir yes sir yes sir yeah, yeah you are visible go on go on okay then uh, so uh, sir to me uh, the, the Uh, I think I won't go for uh, detail for the anatomy, anatomy, but the things remember that uh, patent dated artesis may be uh, it may be a, uh, rarely may be origin that both side uh, as a anomaly uh, anomaly developed at the distal six aortic arch and uh, by nature the pulmonary orifice is um, uh, is always uh, narrower and the aortic orifice is uh, roomy rather than roomy. Uh, by uh, by uh, the by the uh, rule of de development if right sided aortic arch ductal atresis can be well uh, left sided more common left pulmonary artery uh, proximal left subclavian artery or right sided right pulmonary artery aortic arch just distal to the right subclavian artery rarely bilateral other uh, anatomic variations like patent ductus or ligamentum artesum as a component of a vascular ring so this is the uh, i think that this is the consequence of the functional closure why and how it uh, closes and uh, it ultimately um, the duct uh, uh, closes as a with, uh, with, without having any uh, endothelium and the internal elastic lamina and subendothelial lesion so uh, these are the factors which uh, are in influence to close the duct or opening so when there is less oxygen concentration um then it is uh, closed and when there is prostrandin and nitric oxide it op it open, open the duct so these are all the things um, and uh, i think it's a embryological and development uh, aspect 
um, uh, I, I won't go further all these things. Uh, um, what the things happen is interior may close, close may be del delayed, persistent ductal abscesses or be ductal dependent circulation. These four formats of the um, ductal situation, ductal uh, uh, pertinence of ductal or duct may be uh, present as a, uh, as a lifeline for any case. So what are the, what are the duct dependent cases other than the lone PDA? For systemic blood flow, severe left sided osteoclations, hyperplastic left heart syndrome, uh, critical aortic stenosis, coarctation aorta, interrupted aortic arch. And when there is a duct dependent cyanotic lesions, to ensure adequate pulmonary blood flow, there's pulmonary atresia, critical pulmonary stenosis, to ensure adequate transposition of the gate arteries. So the epidemiology is uh, more common in the female. Uh, high altitude is a, uh, is a prevalence. Birth weight and premature, premature child more uh, have some uh, history of uh, the PGM. Positive family history in siblings or parents, maternal rubella, uh, Down syndrome, and fetal valve syndrome. So there are five factors uh, that can influence. Uh, you have, I'm, uh, I own more details: size of the ductus, pulmonary vascular resistance, response of the tissues overload, prematurity, respiratory distress, all these things. So this is the uh, uh, consequence how, how the uh, physiology of the duct uh, having peripatic ducted addresses, what happens um, if there is uh, the left to right turn increase LV output, um, LALV uh, venous return to the LV increase, increase ventricular diastolic volume preload, increase stroke volume, LV dilatation increase in diastolic volume, secondary increase in LA pressure, and signs of left to LA um, left uh, heart failure with LA dilatation and pulmonary edema. If large PDA uh, with pulmonary hypertension is a pulmonary edema, increase pulmonary pressure, increase pressure, increase, uh, pressure overload, and then uh, also RV uh, dysfunctions. So long standing uh, left to right shunting, progressive morphology will change in the pulmonary, progressive infant, uh, increase in pulmonary vascular resistance, pulmonary vascular resistance exceeds uh, uh, um, um, uh, systemic pressure, and ultimately the reversal shunt and SNS just happens. So now come about the classification, the uh, uh, very popular classification, Kriken Co classification is the angiographic classification, in fact, and uh, in duct, uh, when we are we're going to read about duct anatomy, um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the eco findings uh, uh, are not more uh, majority events, uh, some of the events eco findings can helpful for us to manage the patients. Uh, so. However, in, on angiographic classification, ampo, uh, uh, type A is a conical type, uh, while it's consisting at the pulmonary entry end, and uh, it's window like, as a tubular ductus artesis, and then complex ductus with uh, multiple uh, uh, is, uh, imaginations and constrictions and elongated ductus. It's a, another uh, form of complex. And um, by eco, uh, we can uh, conic, uh, conical window or tubular. This kind of uh, lesions can be detected with a special and deep, uh, some modified view. So another uh, 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 classifications there is from uh, involved from our subcontinent Srichitra uh, classifications, uh, where um, the classifications uh, is uh, also is a admixtures of um, uh, of uh, morphology and also the uh, length and width of the, the uh, duct by measuring. Narrowing at the PA end, more than fifty percent of the width of the ampulla. What happens? That's narrowing at the PA end, less than 50% of the width of the ampulla. And um, uh, another is ampulla at both the PA and the aortic end. So uh, uh, one, 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 uh, one side of the, I think it is a uh, 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 suspicion there is a uh, one side there is a uh, ampullary uh, shortening in the PA and there is a ampulla something in the aortic ampulla and there is a mixed lesions. Another thing is length of the duct. This is less than six millimeter and there is a le uh, length of duct more than six millimeter. So in this uh, variation there is maybe saucer shaped, conical shape or cup shape, funnel shaped, cylindrical shaped and length of this narrowing portion is less than one third of the total length and longer stem. Uh, when it's conical, there's a length is uh, short, and, and and funnel shapes a longer stem. And when there is a both um, uh, ampullary widening, 
it will uh, come into the shape of hourglass uh, contexture. This is the, I think, uh, 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 cartonic image. Uh, number one, saucer shape. Number two, conical funnel. And this, uh, uh, and, uh, and the last three one, three one uh, uh, this one is, uh, last one is our uh, something, our glass type here. And this is a long, long tubular. So the size, uh, in, in terms of size, silent PDA is less than 1.5 millimeter and no murmur. Very small, less than uh, what is equal to 1.5 millimeter if murmur is audible. Small is 1.5 to 3 millimeter and murmur. Moderate is 3 to 5 millimeter with murmur. And large is uh, about more than five millimeter. It has been uh, it has been murmur. Sometimes it may not be without any murmur because um, the, the, the PDA is so large uh, it can produce some functional murmurs rather than, than uh, rather than the, uh, its own mechanical sounds. So there is a staging of uh, clinical stagings and stages of echo on patient stage at, um, uh, by uh, Namara, PJ, Sagal. Uh, this is um, uh, 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 this is is, is, a, is a very uh, um, is, is a step is, is been published in the Art uh, Art Disease Child um, and Fetal and Neonatal um, Journal in 2008. It's a long elaborated. Still is helpful to managing the patients. Uh, in, 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 in clinical staging is asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe. Uh, when and in in this uh, uh, wide classifications, uh, everything is included. Uh, the um, uh, patients uh, clinical conditions is uh, um, oxygen um, um, oximetry, uh, is pressure uh, and uh, radiological uh, views and also acid acid based balance. Uh, is a, a C1, C2, C3, and C4. Eco staging is, uh, I think, uh, it, it will be, I think, uh, it needs some uh, special Hello. Hello. The evidence of ductal Hello. flow on tooth dimensional echo. Um, transductal diameter is less than 1.5 millimeter. And no sense of left heart volume loading. No sense of left heart pressure loading. Normal end organ. Um, Street continuous transistor flow. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll uh, show the image later on. Uh, it will helpful for you. Uh, and uh, large is a transversal, uh, 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 moderate is 1.5 to 3 millimeter, is unrestricted parsital transductal flow, and in the large is a transductal diameter is 3 millimeter and unrestricted parsital ductal flow. Severe left to left to heart volume. The clinical features asymptomatic to ice and rangers, a wide variation, presentation, presentation at any age. Uh, and diagnosis of PDA in uh, most cases discharge as healthy newborns. No. Vasculitis when, when decline, murmur becomes apparent. Murmur may be shared successfully along in few cases of physical low birth weight. So, history I don't uh, go for in the uh, childhood. Go further for uh, uh, in the second, third decade. It, um, uh, it may have uh, come with left to right shot and volume overload, may become heart failure. Maybe inferior and uh, when the when there is a um, chance of when the, when the small PDA is so very risky on it may present with inferior and arteries and other than the complications of inferior and arteries, Asenmeyer syndrome, ductal aneurysm and rupture may happen. Non-infective thrombosis with embolism may happen. So, is the general explanations? I think uh, I should not go further for this. Uh, the thing is uh, there is maybe different sciences and clubbing. PD with reversion, arterial pulse and BP in the adult case, corrupting pulse, bisprains pulse, white pulse pressure where, when there is a drastic overflow. So on cardiac explanation, there may be a JVP rise with, with a PDA with, uh, uh, with, in, with a left right chance with volume overload. So, and uh, the heart sound is uh, uh, second heart sound paradoxical split in PDA with more twist to one shunt with pulmonary hypertension, almost single and loud uh, with uh, ice major, uh, and uh, third heart sound will be very present. Hello. This is a murmur uh, with uh, phonogram, audio phonogram. Give, uh, the murmur is known as Gibson murmur also. Uh, it's uh, continuous throughout the system. 
Dr. Shari, your time is over and uh, the, it is switched off already automatically or digitally. Professor M. Bashar, any comments on this presentation? Bashar, bhai. Professor Mohammad Jahid Hussain. Ja Professor Mohammad Jahid Hussain. Okay. Can you, can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? Yeah, yeah. Can you listen to me? Can you listen to me? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to listen to you. Yes, presented the theoretical, theoretical yeah. background of PDA. Hello, 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 please, please. On the title, the adult PDA, how to deal with it, but we can like listen. To... So, uh, actually, it's hard to comment because it's, he could not cover his main topic. Yes, he has, he has uh, covered other things. Can I okay. draw your attention, please? Okay, I think we, we should go to the next presentation. Next presentation by the. I, I got a, I got a few. I, I, I think at the end of the of the. Okay, the, okay, 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 okay. The Dr. Abul Bashar, Abul Hassan Mohammad Bashar, Bashar, are you here? Dr. Bashar, yes, sir. please start your presentation. SFA occlusion, present experience in Bangladesh. Bashar, start your presentation, please. Okay, sir. Sir, can everybody hear me? Yes. Is my screen yes. visible? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yes, please go on. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be in time, of course. And uh, I really uh, want to thank uh, Bangladesh Cardiac Society, uh, my teacher, Shafiq Mujimda Sar is here, and my friend, Dr. Mohsin, who have extended uh, invitation to me to be a part of this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to just let you know that I'm joining from a village home, actually. I came here uh, yesterday. And uh, presenting from this remote part of Bangladesh, about 250 kilometers outside Dhaka. Thanks, Go everybody. So, we'll be talking about uh, superficial femoral artery occlusive disease and things that we have done over the last few years in Bangladesh. Here are my colleagues who have been an uh, uh, integral part of this endeavor, and without their support, I could not have gathered this data and uh, uh, bring it to you. Okay, so, uh, uh, so we, we call it now peripheral arterial disease, actually we used to call it peripheral vascular disease, peripheral arterial occlusive, occlusive disease and all those things. But nowadays, uh, the term that has been uh, accepted worldwide uh, is peripheral arterial disease for stenotic and occlusive diseases of the peripheral vascular tree. I just wanted to give you an idea about the burden of the problem worldwide. Uh, it has been really increasing uh, in terms of uh, the disease burden, all those things. Uh, uh, alarming thing is that in Southeast Asia, we uh, have had uh, 54.8 million cases uh, in the first uh, uh, decade of this uh, century, uh, around 2001 to 2010. So it's a huge burden uh, uh, everybody can understand. And the burden has been increasing selectively on the low and middle income countries more than the high income countries. So that's another point of concern for all of us. Uh, so in Bangladesh, we have every reason to be really alarmed by these statistics. Today we picked SFA, uh, reason being that the burden of the problem is the most severe with SFA. Uh, and why that is, you can see that the vessel actually courses through a muscle tunnel and that subjects it to a lot of uh, things that uh, will not affect other vessels. Uh, for example, uh, it is subjected to stresses, mechanical stresses, flexions, compressions, torsions, and all those things. One reason why uh, the occlusive diseases uh, occur most commonly in this part of the peripheral arterial tree. And in our experience too, I can, we have seen that uh, the number of patients who treat for peripheral arterial disease, uh, more than 50% of these cases are actually uh, coming to belong to the SFA tree. 
Uh, so we have been treating this for the last 10 years, at least I can say that we have been dealing with these SAP problems. And I have told you that the burden of the problem is uh, the most huge uh, with uh, superficial femoral artery that extends from the inguinal ligament uh, to the uh, knee level, the straight vessel, a uh, few branches and goes through a muscle tunnel. So what we do actually, we do plain bilateral angioplasty. used to do it, we still do it. Of course, the number has decreased over the years. We do stenting. What we don't do is debulking and uh, we also use uh, drug coated balloons, but we do not do the debulkings, lasers and all those things. I'll be coming to that later on. Uh, so this is some of the guidelines that have been uh, adopted worldwide. That primary stenting means that any occlusive disease that comes to us, we treat uh, by first intention, by uh, stenting, not by uh, surgical bypass. So that, that is primary stenting. So it, it is still controversial whether for any sort of occlusive disease of SFA, should we go for primary stenting or we consider other means of revascularization? That has not been really settled. Uh, but for uh, simpler lesions, uh, intermediate length lesions, we generally resort to primary stenting. So this is the uh, recent recommendations or the guidelines we can say that's come from the Society of Vascular Surgeons uh, for Claudicans. Uh, we can see that the, uh, the stenting or, or, or PTA has come to be the first choice of revascularization, especially for the smaller or the shorter lesions, less than five. POBA was acceptable for that, but uh, they recommend that if POBA really does not uh, give good result, uh, they have recommended selective stenting. For lesions uh, uh, of having length between 15 to uh, five to 15 centimeter, uh, primary standing has been the recommendation. Uh, they have strongly recommended against endovascular therapy for the baloney vessels, especially the tibial ones. So we, uh, with these guidelines, I'll be going into what we have been doing over the years. Uh, how we approach a uh, patient with SAP disease, if they're claudic and we first think of conservative management with uh, lifestyle modifications, drugs, and all those things. Then we go for revascularization. If the claudication is lifestyle limiting, uh, the patient cannot walk more than a block or two. That is not really enough for his uh, maintenance of daily activities. And of course, the, if the patients have uh, rest pain, tissue loss, of course, we think about revascularization immediately. So this is how we arrive at a diagnosis. Very simple. I could not really help but bring you this uh, Doppler uh, information. Uh, my teachers know, my colleagues know that we really benefit greatly from this tool. Doppler study really uh, can give us a, a very... Uh, uh, a lot of information uh, reaching the diagnosis. We can see occluded vessels, we can see stenosis very clearly and measure them uh, by the Doppler uh, criteria that we have set for these vessels. We can also, of course, do the CT angiogram that gives us picture of the occluded segment, stenosis segment, and help us decide about the strategy that we're going to pursue about these cases. Well, some of the cases that we have treated recently, of course, these are, these are the recent cases, we still do practice POBA. I mean, the, the whole point of bringing you this is uh, that we still uh, do POBA with uh, non-drug balloons. And that sometimes really uh, work well, at least for the short term. Uh, uh, we're not really uh, in a position to comment about the long-term results. But as you can see, uh, for not too tight lesions, the uh, POBA is still an acceptable mode of treatment. Uh, the results are, at least the short-term results are pretty good. Uh, but these are not really practiced in a lot of patients, actually. We, we do stenting in, in, in a greater number of patients than we do POBA. Uh, this is one patient who had some uh, sort of renal dysfunction also, diabetic neuropathy and all those things. This is the occluded segment of the just above nipopletal distal SF, you can say. Uh, we uh, crossed it. In, in this crossing thing, I have a point to mention, actually, because we see the, uh, we have recently brought in a number of crossing tools actually that was not available in Bangladesh in the, in the, in the last decade or the 10, 15 years back. We have some support catheters that help us cross the difficult lesions. This is a CTO that has been crossed by possibly the CXI catheter that comes from Cook USA. Another crossing catheter we have is uh, Rubicon that also helps. This is expensive hardware, but once we have them, uh, we are able to cross more difficult lesions. Then we have this uh, armamentarium of uh, uh, self-expanding stents. I will show you uh, quite a few of them are now available in Bangladesh and they really work wonders. And then uh, we, we, we deploy these stents 
and we really can deploy them across the joints also sometimes these are highly flexible self-expanding stents and uh, they can really give us good results one thing is that uh, like i showed you uh, in the recommendations they have not really shown great enthusiasm about treating the tibial diseases so in this particular case i did not really go for addressing the tibial disease but we corrected the inflow and that really increased the tibial flow greatly and i can tell you this patient is still with me and i can show you how this has led to limb salvage Another patient who had uh, some critical issues like uh, uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy with, a, with an injection fraction of only 25%. I remember this patient went into heart failure immediately after the procedure, but see, he was salvaged, of course. And this is what he had in the SFA, totally occluded segment in the mid-SFA. And then uh, we were able to cross it. We put stents. We did the post-balloon dilatations with whatever we have. Uh, he had another lesion in the iliac tree, so after addressing the uh, SF lesion, we, we did the iliac and this is the uh, runoff. So the, the tibials, of course, not, not very well visualized here, but in the next picture, you can see the tibials really shows up very, very well. So this is what we have. We have stands up to 200 millimeter lengths. We have compatibility up to uh, of six French sheets. Of course, we use seven French uh, uh, because that allows us to visualize the stands and the uh, desired location very well. Visibility is a bit poor with some of these stents, especially Jaguar that comes from Europe. But again, uh, this particular stent is very, very flexible that allows us to be put against the joints. So some demerits and merits taken together, these are the uh, hardware that we have available nowadays. So these are the four stents, like I said, that, that are available nowadays in Bangladesh. Protege uh, that comes from EV3 USA, Jaguar comes from Poland. We have APIG and Lenovo from Boston Scientific. So these are the four self-expanding stents that we routinely use uh, in a superficial femoral artery. We no longer use the, uh, uh, I mean, the uh, balloon expandable ones for, S uh, for SFA. We have these DCVs nowadays, drop coated balloons for SFA, and we have used it with good results, uh, as you can see. Uh, and then of course we can, I have followed this patient up at least for six months, I remember, and then, really hold up very well in the in the at least six months term. You can see the visualization pretty good. So these are the things we have uh, as of now. We, uh, my personal experience, of course, data from NICVD and my private chamber. So uh, about 120 patients in a uh, over a period of uh, three years of SFA only. Uh, these are the patient detail here. And the like, uh, lesion characteristics also, the lesion length uh, varies between 60 millimeter to 220 millimeters. We have stenosis or occlusions. Sometimes we have to take up long CDOs also. And these are the procedural detail. And uh, we mostly treated by stenting, PT wood stenting with treatise being used in uh, about 50% of the cases. All other stents are also being used in uh, certain percentages. So these are the results actually. Uh, uh, we have a one year patency of about 95%, a two year patency exceeding 85%, a three year about more than 80 to 83%. That I think is pretty good. And is the division between the three procedures, POBA, stent, and DCBs. Uh, POBA, of course, falling short of the expectations. That's the worldwide trend I'll show you right now. So this is the uh, data that comes from uh, Society of Vascular Surgeons. You can see that PDA they give a, uh, a two-year follow-up and gives a 68% uh, patency rate uh, with uh, PTA with stand goes up to 68% again. And uh, whenever we do bypass, that gives us about 70 to 75% patency at five years. So you can see the difference between whenever we have lesions that are really long and CDO, and, but still we have a good vein and a good distal runoff, I think bypass gives us the best results. So this is some of the hardware that we don't have at this moment in, in our country. With this, of course, we'd be able to do even better. Uh, some of the dedicated CTO wares we don't have. We don't have the CTO devices like Outback that allows us to do subintimal angioplasty. We do not have super, a very flexible stand. We don't have diagluting stands like Gilba PTX and all those things in this country. We don't have covered, covered stand that are also used nowadays and uh, atherectomy devices. So, but still we have made these progresses, thank you. And I think uh, with these conclusions, I would like to uh, uh, 
uh, say that, okay, well, dealing with SF has not been easy, but over the years we have gained certain expertise that uh, allows us to treat these patients with uh, certain satisfaction, patient benefit, and we can do even better if we have these uh, atherectomy devices and we can also approach the patients from the retrograde approach, something that has not been really happened uh, because uh, for the retrograde approaches, we need some uh, specific hardware that are not yet available. So I believe that things will come in and uh, more more expertise will come in and we'll be able to do better and serve a, a greater number of patients with SFADGs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bashar, for your nice presentation and you end it in very uh, appropriate time. Thank you for the uh, good uh, deliberation. And Professor Noresh Chandra Mondol, are you here? Professor Noresh Chandra Mondol, the vascular surgeon. Comments from the Professor Noresh Chandra Mondol, are you here? Uh, I think he is not here, no? Any comment from the uh, chairpersons? Professor Liakot Hussain Tapon? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, yes, sir. I mean, uh, I'm Dr. I, I'm Dr. Gonna Gonna the, answer, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any comments? Yeah, gee. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. This was a miscellaneous session, the last session. But uh, uh, the last speaker, Abdullah Hassan Muhammad Bashar, has brilliantly presented the topic. And I have enjoyed many lectures today. Uh, of them, he actually represent, represented whole Bangladesh in the field of peripheral arterial disease, what we are doing. And there is a new term in leg attack, like heart attack. And tremendously, when he presented the, the topic, superior uh, femoral vein obstruction, and what we are doing in our setting. Thank you, sir. And thank you, uh, speaker. Dr. Abdullah Shafi Mojumdar, just a uh, comment. Yeah, I yeah went please. To, uh, I went to the Rashtri University of Chicago, for training in pediatric cardiology, uh, there is so that uh, the inter intervention radiologist they do perform all the peripheral intervention and intervention procedure in uh, particularly in uh, peripheral vascular disease is very well established in Bangladesh, and uh, I have been very much uh, glad to see the to watch the presentation of Dr. Abul Hassan Mohammed Bashar has nicely presented and I congratulate him uh, to further expand the intervention uh, uh, procedure in Bangladesh, whether it uh, vascular surgeon uh, or cardiologist is doing or intervention radius, that, that does not matter. But I, there are a lot of scope to develop uh, this intervention procedure, particularly in, in case of peripheral vascular disease. Uh, Prevail of vascular diseases. So thanks, uh, Dr. Abu Hassan Bashar again for his very brilliant presentation. Thanks. Thank Professor, you, uh, Professor Mohammed Taidus, just a, uh, a small question to uh, Dr. Bashar. Uh, what are the recommended pharmacological agents uh, be, uh, besides the intervention for the peripheral artery disease? Great question, sir. Uh, I'll take a minute uh, to answer this question. Uh, we, we used to have, see, I mean, uh, of course, uh, besides the antiplatelets and the statins, uh, we have uh, the, the FDA-approved uh, silostagil, you know that. Uh, so that has been the only FDA-approved drug for increasing the claudication distance. Nowadays, they have also been thinking about the pentoxifiline, oxyphil CR. That is the second drug they have approved uh, for claudication. There's another drug that is, both, both the drugs are available in Bangladesh market. There is a third drug that has recently come into the Bangladesh market that was in the European market, but not in the USA, that is called Agile 2, Neftidrofuril. So this is the agent that has been very popular in Europe, but was not available in Bangladesh. It's been a month uh, or so that a company, a Jiska Pharmaceutical, the only company manufacturer who have brought this uh, uh, particular drug to Bangladesh market. And we have started prescribing this. I'm yet to uh, see the results in my patient population, but hopefully in six months or so, I'll be able to tell you 
in a comparative manner, whether it's any better than Silostrogel or Oxyphil CR, but this is a new drug that I want to tell you. Thank you, sir. Do, do you please explain so, the uh, algorithm of using this pharmacological agent? Algorithm is that, of course, we all the, all the patients get uh, antiplatelet and statin. That's the first thing. Of course, we use, if the patient does not have severe heart failure, we start off with uh, a low dose of 50 milligrams uh, twice daily of Silostrogel. If the patient is a claudic, that, that's, that's my preference of uh, 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 treating these patients, going to silostrogel. A lot of patients complain of uh, disturbing headache. So we, what we do is we start with a low dose, half tab twice daily maybe. And uh, sometimes we do add oxyphil CR because that's the drug that uh, increases the tissue penetration of the or tissue oxygenation uh, uh, of these uh, ischemic patients. I think uh, Gelto or the naphtidofuril will come as a third agent at, in my consideration because uh, we are yet to see the results of this drug in Bangladesh population. So that's how I want to go, actually. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Dr. Our sir, next sir, I, have, I have one question, sir, to Dr. Bashar. Sir. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Shreed, can I, can you I ask the question at the end of the, at the, end uh, of the, all the presentations? <laughs> Just one uh, the next one presentation minute. is by Dr. S.M. Habibullah Salim. Cardiovascular prevention, necessity versus disability, Bangladesh perspective. Dr. Habibullah Salim is in the, uh, what is should we call in the studio of Bangladesh Cardiac Society. He has come all the throw from Silet to present his case from the studio of the Bangladesh Cardiac Society. Dr. Salim, please. Thank you, sir, for a nice introduction. I am also grateful to the participants still participating in this program and the last session of this program. Respected chairperson, respected participants from home and abroad, Assalamu alaikum. Today's last session topics is the preventive cardiology. Though we are speaking every time the prevention is better than cure, but in practice, we are very much less active in this session and less counseling. So in 12 minutes only, there's just flavor of the, the how prevention, preventive cardiology or prevention is uh, happening in Bangladesh. Uh, it's just a glimpse, just What's necessity, question? or what What's is the question? reality in Bangladesh? We you know yeah. all non-communicable diseases are the leading cause of the leading cause of death globally and one of the major health challenges of the 21st century. The major NCDs responsible for these deaths included cardiovascular diseases, nearly 17.9 million deaths, accounting for 44% of all NCD deaths and 31% of all global deaths. 85% are due to heart attack and stroke. Ischemic heart disease affects around 126 million individuals worldwide. Over three quarters of CBD deaths take place in low and middle income countries. The leading cause of death in Bangladesh is also CBD. If you see this slide, you, you see the WHO NCD country profile 2018, the global mortality is nearly 31%. And you see, see the other major non-communicable disease, cancer is 16%, COPD is 7%, and diabetes is 3%. So, but how much cancer is now Practiced uh, or can uh, people uh, afraid of cancer is very much, but uh, by doubling the 31% cardiovascular disease, we are not so much afraid about this the disease. And there is a direct relationship between the country income and region in the worldwide. And WHO NCT profile shows the Southeast Asia region is the highest in cardiovascular disease patient, and also the lower middle income group are the highest in the death group. So the treatment is going on and treatment is advancing. Recent, we have seen the how we managing the current management plan regarding ischemic heart disease patient, the coronary vascularization. The recent study uh, is published in the Cardiovascular Journal 2020. It shows that the out-of-pocket spending is a major payment strategy of mm -hmm. Out of pocket spending is okay. Okay. No. 
out of pocket spending is the major payment strategy for healthcare in Bangladesh and poverty headcount increased by 3.5% due to this out of pocket expenditure. Ischemic heart disease may contribute to national poverty as it may turn into a catastrophic health event for the patient's family. And in this journal also shows the in Bangladesh per capita GDP and the, the costing of the current two management strategy of PCI and SCAPS. In Bangladesh, it shows that $2,500 and 3 PCI is nearly $3,000, whereas per capita GDP is 18 but nearly $1,800. So in other country contribution, so it is recommended that the only the current management plan cannot save our patients properly and the patient's uh, profile is now so much abstained. And uh, suddenly in 2020, a year of communicable disease. In the time of COVID-19, Cardiovascular disease patients are faced with a double edged threat. Not only are they more at risk of developing severe forms of the virus, but they may also be afraid to seek ongoing care for their heart. So, if we see the world meter just last day's data, say the world 110 million and deaths is also 2 million, but also there is a more of the patient is recovered. In Bangladesh, also there is a 5,42,000 patient and deaths is nearly 8,000, and there is a most of the patient are recovered. But what about the cardiovascular pandemic? If we see the cardiovascular pandemic, the ISDFX 157 million worldwide, and the prevalence rate is expected to exceed globally from 1,655 to 1,845 per 100,000 by the year of 2030, but with the current management plan. Every year, nearly 180 lakhs people die worldwide. And by 2030, this is predicted to rise to nearly 230 lakhs. And in Bangladesh also, the 2.5 lakhs die due to CBD and every year it is rising. And alarming is that there is no scope of recovery it is, as it is chronic in nature. And but in COVID, vaccine now give us hope to eliminate the COVID-19 pandemic in only one year. But what about the permanent pandemic cardiovascular disease? No vaccine is yet available and there is no hope of vaccine in future. But we should not, we should not give up hope. So there is the necessity because most cardiovascular disease can be prevented by addressing behavioral risk factors such as tobacco use, unhealthy diet, obesity, physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol using population-wide strategies. And prevention is effective because the elimination of health behaviors would make it possible to prevent at least 80% of CBDs and even 40% of cancers. So what does it mean by cardiovascular prevention? The cardiovascular prevention is defined as a coordinated set of actions at the population level or targeted at an individual that are aimed at eliminating or minimizing the impact of CBDs and their related disabilities. So we know all the two types of intervention there is population wide and individual. And if we provide the two in combination that the patient will be more benefited. Our individual prevention can be primary, secondary and tertiary. We know all, but the refreshing our knowledge, the primary prevention. So we, we have some idea the prevention means possibly some smoking cessation and this like these topics, but actually it has a wide spectrum. Primary prevention is represent the earliest possible intervention before disease begins. And secondary prevention includes early detection and halting the progression of established but asymptomatic disease. And tertiary prevention involves slowing, arresting, or reversing disease to prevent recurrent symptoms, further deterioration, and subsequent events, such as PCI, caves, and other cardiac surgery, and finally, cardiac rehabilitation. So, Besides the traditional risk factor, there are also a number of underlying determinants of CBDs, which is called the causes of the causes. These are a reflection of the major forces driving social, economic, and cultural change, globalization, urbanization, and population aging. 
Other determinants of CBDs include poverty, stress, and hereditary factors. And in Bangladesh reality, Bangladesh, we know that Bangladesh reached the lower middle income country status in 2015, showing steady progress in economic development, is now 39th largest in the world by nominal GDP, estimated population nearly 165 million, and density 1116, and the growth rate is 1.37%, and per capita GNI is 1909 is dollar, and there is a poverty rate is now 24%. And being among the most densely populated countries in the world, Bangladesh is in the midst of an epidemic transition, like with poles shifting from communicable disease to NCDs. The prevalence of CBD in Bangladesh is 3.4%, and every year, death rate is 171 per 100,000 population. And in STEPS 2018, risk factor survey shows that majority of patients, nearly 70% patient, has one or two risk factors and substantial, substantial proportion of people have three or more risk factors, really alarming. So high out-of-pocket expenditure, low health budget, and chronic nature of the disease make the prevention approach inevitable for survival in this region. So who, WHO response, under the leadership of WHO, all member states agreed in 2013 on global mechanism to reduce the available, available NCD burden including global action plan for the prevention and control of NCDs. And in guideline of WHO, Bangladesh government response also in the alignment of the WHO, these targets align with sustainable development goals of which target is 3.4 is by 2030 to reduce by one third premature mortality from NCDs to prevention and treatment and promote mental health and well-being. And the important thing is reducing the burden of NCDs is also essential to achieving other several sustained development goals of the government. So how we are doing in Bangladesh to combat in CBD? We are actually working in, uh, in our style and everybody is working. Such a Ministry of Health and Family Welfare is in the 2018 probably uh, launching the National Multisectoral NCD Coordination Committee. The head is the uh, chair, uh, chairperson is uh, Minister of Health, and the secretary is the NCDC unit of the eight DGHS. There is also new one is the lifestyle unit of DGHS. There is a WHO project, steps, risk factor survey, and now resolved with National Heart Foundation, where Heart Foundation uh, is con conducting this thesis, uh, this study, and patient uh, and study was happening in the government Upajala Hospital and patient referred to Heart Foundation. And there, there are also best buy packages for low resource setting. And Bangladesh Cardiac Society is a partner, also BNNCP, the National Heart Foundation, Bangladesh Society of Cardiovascular Prevention, and the IPDI is still working for professional development to prevent CBD. And also so there is a non-medical person running Saul, Progga, et cetera, in their ways. So everybody is trying to reach, achieve the target 25% elective reduction uh, of the cardiovascular disease. But everybody is working, but still see the trend is... Go to the conclusion, please. Writing. Go so, to your conclusion. So a future hope is that changing old habits and committing to a healthy lifestyle requires a lot of courage, persistence and determination. So action by all is necessary to reach our vision. Our combined effort will reach, reduce the risk of modern killers. So, so thanks all, and also on behalf of the candidate of CLA Division, and thanks all the participants of BCS Annual Scientific Conference 2020. Have a heart healthy, long life. Thank okay. you all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Habibullah Salim, uh, to uh, emphasizing the preventive measures to be taken. And the, all the sessions were with the curative measures and the treatment measures. Mm -hmm. So it is a very quite different thing the novel things to the prevention. And the one one point you can you can add is the primordial prevention. That yeah. that you add on the prevention, yeah. environmental and the other social factors. Be, be, that may be termed as the primordial. Primordial prevention. Uh, yeah. Primary before the primary.